Okay, uh, my name is Xun Wu. Uh, I'm uh, with the uh, Division of uh, uh, Public Policy at the uh, HKUST, and I'm um, glad uh, to be here and to uh, discuss the issue of uh, the linkage between uh, Public Research University in Hong Kong and the Department of uh, uh, the Technology Innovation Hub in Greater Bay Area here. First of all, I'd like to mention that uh, uh, you know, uh, Professor Lee's uh, study actually is an inspiration uh, for kind of looking at uh, this particular topic here. And uh, he, he presented a study that already completed. And I'm going to discuss um, a project that, that we ju we're just getting started. The project is now uh, funded um, by the uh, government, uh, the public policy, uh, sorry, public policy, uh, 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 the uh, research scheme. And uh, it, it will, you know, uh, for three years project here. So I'm going to share with you some of the the uh, I think some of the thoughts that uh, that that we have on this topic uh, uh, during the process of uh, uh, the project proposal and also uh, to also uh, uh, at the, you know this time also uh, to uh, perhaps also solicit the comments and the, and the suggestion of how to how to go forward on on this project. Um, so. The, as uh, Professor Lee uh, mentioned before, uh, the, one of the strengths area for Hong Kong is the, uh, the you know, public research university are highly ranked right, uh, globally. So you, we have actually um, five universities here that you, you know, consistently ranked among the top 100 university in the world. So, so this is a, one of the great strengths um, uh, of Hong Kong. But at the same time, we also observe that uh, there's a, there's a disparity between the, uh, the world leading university and the development of a, a technology innovation in Hong Kong itself. Right? Later on, I'm going to share with you uh, some of uh, the statistics uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, some of the recent trend uh, in technology innovation development in Hong Kong. Because actually, you find out that Hong Kong is actually uh, not only lag behind, but also uh, the overall performance uh, has deteriorated uh, over time. Right. So, so that's actually, um, is actually is a you know significant uh, disparity, and we want to find out what what might be uh, the reason for that, and uh, what are the uh, possible uh, policies uh, that can be uh, made to to uh, to deal with this issue, and what are the contribution from uh, different stakeholders on, on on this. So, this is just to uh, uh, show you uh, sort of what what are the the. Uh, Perhaps the last few years uh, of uh, uh, the performances of Hong Kong's in innovation, right, um, as uh, ranked you know, international. There's a global innovation index. Uh, they actually have these ranking every year, just like other other ranking. And uh, if you look at Hong Kong in, um, you know, six years ago, Hong Kong was ranked as number one in Asia, right, uh, you know, 2013. Um, look at where it is today. Right? It's actually, um, you know, the, the rank that's become 14 and actually become fourth uh, in Asia. And other uh, countries have moved up, like uh, you know, Singapore and uh, Korea and Japan, and uh, they all moved up. Right? And, and then Hong Kong actually, if you look at overall uh, innovation performances, has deteriorated. But to be fair, 14 is still pretty good, right? Because uh, Hong Kong in, at still, you can say, at the top of the world. But then you look at the details um, about out, output in terms of innovation. <coughs> this is the kind of things that really matter. Yeah. So, so in, in terms of the, the way that this index um, is, is compiled is actually uh, based on input as well as output. Right? So input would be including things like uh, rule of law, and the infrastructures and the uh, ICT readiness and, and, and so, on for, so on and so forth. These are kind of input. And then, of course, you have to look at the uh, uh, innovation output. You have to look at patent. You have to look at uh, uh, your, uh, the, the percentage of your GDP is actually from uh, the high tech industry. So those are kind of output. If you look at output, uh, you find out that Hong Kong's ranking is a very, very low. You know, if, if you look at the first one, for example, uh, on the on the uh, knowledge uh, and the technology output here, right? Uh, if you look at the, the ranking here, this is a nowhere near even you know, top 20. A lot of them can rank uh, as low as uh, you know 81 and uh, 100 something. Right? So this is a very you know 
rank level. And also, in terms of uh, uh, creative output, there are some bright spots. I would say if you look at some of them, rank relatively high. But, but overall, uh, these are actually uh, much, you know, rank much, much lower uh, in terms of uh, uh, output here. So, so that actually leads to the question about uh, efficiency. You know, um, because if your rank is overall still pretty high, 14, still decent, but then output is so low, what is the explanation? The explanation is that your input is actually quite high. You know, that it, Hong Kong's input in innovation, the worldwide, is actually ranked very high. This is actually ranked uh, uh, in is like eighth, something like that. <coughs> That's for input here. So output ranked uh, 20, 21. Something. So basically, you look at uh, the comparison between input and output here. This suggests that uh, Hong Kong innovation system is not efficient at all. And compared to China, for example, Ch China is now the efficiency ratio is one, number one in the world in terms of in the giving, given the rule of law, given the infrastructure, given the uh, the ICT readiness here, China is able to make use of the input right in a much greater, you know, more efficient way uh, than 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 Hong Kong does here. So, so I think that's actually something that uh, uh, that represents a cause of a, a great concern, and and the, and this is the one area where I think that the government and the businesses and so forth need to think about it. You know, what, what to do with this lower level of efficiency uh, and innovations. And uh, if you look, look at a global startup ecosystem ranking, this is also quite important in high technology development here. None of the cities in Greater Bay areas now is ranked uh, among the top 20 here, right? Although we have a high hope, high aspiration for Greater Bay Area development here. So far, this is the reality here, that Northern City now is ranked uh, high enough right, uh, to be considered as a global uh, leader uh, in this space. OK, now let's look at the university. Uh, we just mentioned before that uh, the university here is well run, and uh, they achieve international uh, you know, very high uh, ranking in, in, uh, uh, by various of global ranking here. But I want to um, uh, call your attention um, to uh, this one particular rankings. It's called uh, uh, the World Most Innovative University. For this ranking, that the, the, the indicators are not publication, right? not academic publication, but indicators are something like a patent volume, patent success, global patent, patent citation, and uh, uh, industry article citation impact, uh, percentage of uh, industry collaboration article, and so on and so forth. So those are quite looking at a, a different set of metrics he here, really looking at uh, the contribution of research university on innovation and the technology. So when you look at this set of indicator here, and uh, you know, the, the, these are the universities actually ranked you know, pretty high in, in that particular, the top 20. And uh, some of the universities are usual suspect. They are actually ranked uh, very well across uh, different uh, rankings here. But for Hong Kong, none of the universities is ranked among the top 100 most innovative universities here. Zero, right? If you look at other places, uh, Japan has nine of them ranked as the top 100. Uh, South Korea have eight. And uh, China now, is, if you look at the uh, gradually, the number of the innovative universities in China has risen uh, you know, uh, uh, very quickly. So China now has five universities. Hong Kong, zero. And uh, you know, these are kind of the uh, most innovative universities in, uh, uh, in Asia uh, by this uh, ranking here. You can see that a lot of universities in South Korea have done very well in this space of contributing to innovation technology. And the university in Japan, of course, you know, the, now uh, more and more universities in, in mainland China has risen up in, in, in this space. Okay, so one of the arguments um, in defense of the uh, university's performance in this is that uh, in Hong Kong's uh, uh, GDP, uh, the, the overall, uh, the IMD expenditure is actually quite low. Right? Um, Professor Lee just mentioned here, we're, in the pro you know, uh, looking, we're, we're looking at expand the uh, uh, the 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 IMD expenditure from point, uh, point 0.7 to 1.5, right? So percent here. But if you look at uh, other uh, uh, economy, other countries here, uh, these are percentages much much higher than in Hong Kong. That that is true. But at the same time, <coughs> when we compare the statistics, 
of R&D expenditure of a higher education institution as percent of GDP. The, the rate, you know, the, the percentage of R&D or R&D resources for Hong Kong University is not low. If you look at the, these are very comparable with other, uh, 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 other economy, other countries have done much, much better than in Hong Kong here. So, so in that way, when I look at this statistic here, I think there's a really no excuse saying that uh, Hong Kong's somehow innovation performance should be lower because of the, uh, the contribution here. So, so this is one area where we kind of have to think about it in the university. What kind of uh, research are we producing here? Why uh, you know, we are ranked so high in the academic research front, but also lag behind in the innovation space here, despite of the R&D expenditures on university already. Right, so, so if you look at the, 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 you know, how the university can play a more important role uh, in, advance, in advancing the, uh, the development of, of the technology innovation in Greater Bay Area here, uh, it is actually beyond the technology transfer here. I mean, of, oftentimes, much of the discussion is of te technology transfer. But the question I like to start with is that you have to produce those kind of relevant technology in the first place in order to find a good way to transfer them to the industry here, right? What kind of uh, really the ideas and technology are we producing in the first places here? Are we producing the right kind of technologies that actually would lead itself to more of technology transfer efforts? Then the second will be tech, technology transfer, right? Then the third is actually, how do you actually make sure that the, the technology transfer can lead to, you know, kind of real uh, the, the uh, uh, innovation-driven economy, uh, not necessarily benefit a few professors in the university, but also can have a broader impact for the whole economy here. So, so if you look at this, uh, the, the university role in a whole uh, ecosystem of innovation technology hub here, there are a lot of different ways the university uh, can help this. If you look at the, the linkages with the uh, uh, investor network and uh, uh, the uh, uh, innovating growth company, startup, and so forth. That, there's a variety of, you know, like uh, in terms of uh, the manpower, in terms of training, right? In terms of uh, idea, in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the places where the innovation activity uh, take place here. So, so there's a lot of potential linkages to, uh, uh, to explore uh, for Hong Kong to uh, university to play a more important role here. One of the ideas I, I like to highlight is that university can serve uh, as a, uh, the, uh, it, uh, the open innovation platform, right? Um, because here, if you look at, you know, some of you here might be very familiar with the idea of open innovation here. Firm now recognize that uh, to do innovation, to be successful innovation, they have to collaborate with uh, the partners across different places here. So the firms in Greater Bay Area, especially mainland China side here, they are actively looking for global partner here. And also, uh, firm outside Hong Kong, uh, outside Hong Kong, outside Great Bay Area, are looking actively at, at to partner with the firms and other agencies in Greater Bay Area here. But the problem is that there's still uh, the, the platform is needed here to make it happen here. And the university, public research university, can be a great vehicle to make it happen here, that can establish the platform to make it happen. I just want to give you one example of uh, uh, such innovation, uh, the open innovation platform. This is a, uh, by, uh, our university, uh, the uh, Educate USD, that is a foreign dome research institute here. This is actually set up as an open innovation platform to inviting uh, the, the research team around the world and also collaborating the firms both in and outside the Greater Bay Area here. It's, it's open innovation platform is in a sense that it does not only serve the interests of the university, but it provides as a platform for it open, you know, the more innovation activity uh, to take place here. This is actually one of the uh, ideas for the university. So um, one, one point I want to make is that uh, there's a lot of activity now uh, being looked upon uh, from the perspective of uh, you know, uh, significant development in Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and other uh, Greater Bay Area uh, uh, cities here. But here the idea is how can public research university, right, given its strengths in research and so forth, help the industry and the economy grow better here, right? So, so here, if you look at the various different ways here, this is actually beyond just the creating new industry, not just the creating AI labs or creating, you know, those, those kind of a, a new industry uh, 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 biologies and, and the bio industry. But you can look at, the, you know, there's many, many different ways, like upgrading of mature industry, diversification of uh, old industry into related, related new one, industrial transportation. There are a 
host of the areas where university can also play an important role beyond this, uh, 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 beyond just uh, looking at the creating of uh, the new industry here. I think I mind that uh, the time's up, yeah. so I will uh, just stop here. Now. <laughs> and uh, uh, I will have some new uh, the other slides uh, about uh, the research project uh, that we're currently doing. And uh, I'll, later on, if there's a question and so forth, I can share with you some of our ideas now. Thank you.